Is it a manual manual of the video? Hope you guys are doing well. So let's revisit the first appearance of the Harm Guy in comic books, The Amazing Spider-Man 238. So the creative team for this issue is headlined by Roger Stern, the writer, and the artist John Romita Jr. and Sr. So I really love Romita Jr.'s artwork in this book, so the panels are very detailed. There's a lot of energy in terms of the rendering of the characters. Really appreciate the Peter Parker, the red Peter Parker in the corner. So he's very angry. Aunt May and her fiancé were almost run over by criminals. And then half and half visual, half Peter Parker, half Spider-Man. Really love that visual, mainstay in Spider-Man comic books. And then we have a moment to reflect on Uncle Ben. So Peter Parker thinks about Uncle Ben. He's still honoring Uncle Ben. He still feels regret over what happened to him. And the supporting cast. So it's not just the Peter Parker Spider-Man story. So some time is dedicated to the supporting cast like Lance Bannon, Robbie Robertson, and especially Aunt May. And the shadow of Norman Osborn still looms over Peter Parker, aka Spider-Man. So here he says, sometimes I think Norman Osborn will haunt me for the rest of my life. And then we kind of jump into the Hobgoblin mystery. So Georgie Hill, he actually discovers one of the Green Goblins layers, aka Norman Osborn. And he thinks of a dude who might be interested in this information. And he tells this dude, which is the mysterious Hobgoblin we can see in the right hand corner. So this is kind of a trope in Spider-Man comic books. So a lot of characters are going to discover Norman Osborn's layers and they're going to become a Goblin character or a character connected to them will. We're going to see that Georgie Hill thinks he's going to get paid by the Hobgoblin. And he's actually going to get blown up. And we can see right away that the Hobgoblin is very ruthless and he's very analytical. So right away he gets to work. He wants to study all of Norman Osborn's journals, his equipment, and he wants to learn from his errors. So he wants to build his own legacy. And we're going to see before he's revealed, there's a nice little anticipation, nice little build up. We can kind of see him creeping from the shadows. And he's re revealed on the last page of the issue. So I think this is one of the greatest villain introductions and page reveals at the end of a Spider-Man comic book. All right, guys. But let me know what you guys think. And as always, I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. All that good stuff. Like, comment, subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys next time.